Welcome everybody to the Monday, December 18th, 2023 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Call the meeting to order. This meeting is being videotaped for your viewing pleasure. Um, first item is approve the minutes of December 4th and December 5th. So, December 5th was the 32nd meeting of the Board of Assessors to, with the Board of Assessors to okay the slightly revised tax rate. And the 4th was our prior select board meeting here. There's the 5th, I just read through, so I read through the 4th earlier, it looked good, 5th looks good as well. I'll make a motion to approve both meeting minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Next, vote to uh, so that we vote to approve accounts payable warrants in the amount of two hundred and seventy-two thousand five hundred and seventy-six dollars and three cents. A payroll warrant in the amount of one hundred and forty-six thousand nine hundred and fifty-eight dollars and thirty-nine cents. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of thirty-five thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars and fifty cents. The accounts payable warrant in two, for 272000 much of that was the 92000 90, what was it, 96000 98000 for the chipper, the wood chipper for the highway department that was authorized at town meeting in June. Um, payroll payroll's mostly school, the payroll deduction warrant is mostly insurance. Um, so I'm going to move to approve those three warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, meetings attended by select board members. We'll skip over Erica due to the fact she's not here. Uh, I attended the capital improvement uh, meeting. I also went to the transfer station to post the cameras. <laughs> so. Cameras are up at the transfer station if anybody tries to not follow the rules. <laughs> and then you what? Should, you should have announced that so we yeah, could yeah. block the person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who, monitor, who, who monitors the cameras? And then I'll be at your door. <laughs> <laughs> who monitors the cameras? Um, who monitors the person monitoring the cameras? <laughs> Um, that's it. All right. I had a school committee meeting, which is, um, yeah. Um, yeah, the school apparently has, we have a, there's a capital, capital meeting coming up with the school in a week. There's apparently some urgent roof issues at the high school. That should never a good word. It's never a good subject. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Um, public comments, none. Unfinished business. So we have this long running uh, discussion about the July rain events. We might want to add to it today's hideous rain event. Um, we kind of got over four inches of rain in just a relatively short period of time. Which once again caused significant damage, and um, just go, you know going around see, seeing the damage that Shelburne Falls Road sustained, um, seeing the damage that the recently repaved Pine Hill Road sustained. That was, in retrospect, not the <laughs> whatever. Um, but that that road looks almost as bad as it did before it was repaved. Pine Hill. Yeah. Um, and the failure to address the existing town stormwater drainage system um, uh, on Upper Baptist Hill Road led to significant residential damages, um, which are just which were did not have to happen. And it is uh, it's a problem when individual town residents have to bear significant financial costs because the town isn't maintaining the, the existing stormwater. And, and I understand there is a desire to have an, 
engineering study of the whole thing before proceeding, but there was a whole lot in that that could have and should have been done in retrospect, and uh, that is known to not be functioning correctly. And uh, I'm going to have to address that within the next couple of weeks before the next meeting. Um, new business. National Grid's outreach team, outreach team, are they here? Uh, uh, was it Dana? Hi there, this is uh, Joe Carroll. Can you hear me? I'm on the phone. Yes. Okay. Yes, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm trying to log on via the, uh, the Zoom link, but I'm having an issue with the passcode uh, letting me in. So I'm not sure if that's just, I just need an updated passcode. Um, but I've tried a couple different combinations. Did you go on the, have no luck at the did you go on the website? Yeah, yeah, so I actually, I went through the website as well as the link that was emailed to us. Um, and they're both looking for the uh, meeting passcode, which for some reason, I know I'm having an issue with it as well as one of my um, colleagues. Okay. Well, I mean, so, I'm, I'm okay I'm, with um, if if you're okay just speaking in this manner to us as a you know just a disembodied voice with a big picture of a telephone on you know where your face would normally be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if if you're okay with that, I can I can go through. I believe the presentation was sent to you, um, so I can kind of walk you through through the slide deck if that works for you. Otherwise, I can always try to reschedule it. And join you at a um, I don't future know. meeting, whichever. Yeah, we're we're drawing blanks on the presence of a slide deck, however. Okay. Okay, so it's really your call. I mean, I'm more than happy to kind of talk through some of the high level and then get the slide deck to you, or I can kind of postpone it and now, plan to join you at a future. No, you're you're here. Let's just talk. Let's just talk. So. Just, okay. So just, just talk, right. talk yeah, to yeah, us, yeah. talk to us about what, uh, you know, what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then I can always join you and redo the presentation. Again. Yeah. But, but yeah, so my name is, my name's Joe Carroll. I work in the stakeholder engagement group at National Grid and we're really trying to hold some informative, I know this will be a little tough without the slide deck, um, presentations over a future proposed project on our E5 F6 transmission line that runs through the town of Conway. Um, and so a little bit about the project, we rebranded the project name when it comes to our external public outreach as well as permitting to the Central to Western Mass Energy Improvement Project. Um, we really did that to try and relate it to the communities in the area that we're working in hopes that when we do any mailings or um, you know any outreach, we can, we're hoping to kind of grasp grab the attention of the audience um, in hopes that, you know, this title might, you know, resonate with them a little bit more than just the E5 F6 transmission line, which doesn't necessarily, um, you know, catch many eyes. Um, so that's just kind of a little bit about what you may see when it comes to our external outreach. Um, and when it comes to the, the scope of work, um, the project as a whole, a little background, the E5 F6 transmission line was originally constructed in the early 1900s. Um, there was some refurbishment and renumbering work done in 2001, but the majority is, you know, really kind of original, um, as well as some targeted, um, you know, adjustments or targeted repairs over the years. Uh, it consists of approximately 690 structures, travels through 16 communities, and the right of way for the main line and tap is approximately 67 to 69 miles long. So it is a fairly, fairly long line, a fairly uh, large project. And the goal of the project is a complete rebuild of the main line and taps. Uh, so it is, you know, a fairly significant project. Um, the line is currently operating at 69 kV, and the kV represents the voltage, and that will remain the operating voltage when construction is complete. 
However, the structures will be built to the standards to operate up to 115 kV. So the structures will, will remain operating at the same voltage as it's currently operating. However, will be built so that if there is a need for an increase in the voltage that we're prepared for that in the future. Specific to Conway, we'll be replacing 29 structures. So that there are 29 existing structures on the line. We'll be replacing those structures with new structures and wire, as well as installing optical ground wire, which we also refer to as OPGW, which is really there in short to help you know, sort of improve the communication between the structures and stations. And it also acts as a second line of defense from weather events such as lightning strikes. And in addition to, you know, the actual construction of the structures, um, you know, if we need to make any access improvements, um, we will only when necessary, where necessary, and then any associated vegetation management work uh, within the right of way, we'll also be um, conducting that as well. It could be as simple as just kind of clearing some brush and mowing, or if there's any tree clearing that's needed within our easements and within the right of way, um, that will also take place. So that's a little bit about, um, you know, kind of the project overview as a whole. So I just want to pause there and see if there are any questions. I know it's a little difficult without seeing the slide deck. So for the 29 structures you're replacing, I'm assuming you're talking about the monopoles? Yes, yeah. So they're currently, I think the more common structure within the right of way that will be replacing are sort of the lattice towers. Okay. And we're going to replace them. Uh, the proposed structures are really more of like a double circuit structure. So they don't look as, I guess, cumbersome as currently. Are, are they going to be replaced with like structures, meaning you're not going to have a height difference? So there will be a height difference. Um, the approximate height difference, and this is kind of generally throughout the line, is the new structures will be potentially 5 to 25 feet taller, and that's partly due to the wiring that we're going to be adding, but also because of the increase in the potential operating voltage, um, it would re it requires us to have a taller structure. But they will remain with you know it's about a five to twenty five foot difference in height. Yeah. So I mean, the, I'll, I'll just say from the from the point of view of the town, the one good thing about a project like this is that. When, when it's complete, we get to reassess National Grid for this project and we get to assess more tax, potentially more taxes, whatever. The bad thing about that is that National Grid now has as their business plan, like lawyering up and fighting every town that tries to do that. Um, but um, that's just the way the world works now. And National Grid is not the only one that does that. They all do that now. Um, but, um, you know, the, to, to, you know, I would love to see something like this just go underground or whatever. That that where, where where just because where this line is located in Conway is in a particularly scenic place, like between the river and all of the hills that look at the river, and um, it's just such an eyesore. Yeah, raising at twenty five feet, like would be an even more size. Um, you know, and it, it doesn't matter whether it's lattice stroke, st whatever unit pole, whatever. It just just gigantic wire structures extending from horizon to horizon are just aesthetically unpleasant. Um, and, you know, but, but they've been there, they've been there forever, um, you know, since when the railroads, I, th I think they've actually been there, I thought that part of that was when the railroads were put in the 1880s, but um, I could be wrong. Uh, the, the, um, and, and you know, residents never are happy with the vegetation management issues because um, you guys use Roundup um, because you're allowed to use Roundup, um, but uh, that that is that that triggers numerous residents residents um, who are really opposed to the use of that substance. But I try to tell people we can't regulate. You're regulated by the state. You have magic words that you get to use to make sure that the towns don't don't get 
any chance to regulate you, and that's just, um, you know, the laws in this state. And then, um, but the the one thing that we would, if we could do anything, is to, is um, improve your traffic management and the scheduling of gigantic traffic going through tiny little. I mean, every road, every road except the state road in the middle of town, are just. You know, you can barely fit two vehicles, like car, automobiles. And when you, the types of vehicles that are on our little country roads that, can, that, that are carrying, you know, these enormous structures um, and the amount of various prep, you know, the, all, all the vehicles, all the heavy duty construction vehicles that go, go with that, um, just, you know, so much dust, so much dirt, so much noise. Um, it seems like to people that you start, it starts right the minute that you're legally allowed to at 7 a.m. or whenever you're legally allowed to, and you go right up until the minute before you're legally required to leave the job or whatever. I don't even know what, but that we get so many complaints about the noise in the traffic and just, it just seems like you space out the traffic for the convenience of the project um, rather than the convenience of, not convenience, but rather than minimizing the unpleasantness of the many residents that live near it. And, um, yeah, that'd be great if you could just do all the, tra do all the transporting in big chunks um, and then stage your stuff there and I, I don't but I, I guess that costs more money but I don't know but but you know th there's also a widespread belief that it that that the reason that there's so much of this maintenance is because the way Massachusetts regulates the, this sort of thing is that um, you know if you get permission to do it it doesn't you, you get cost plus your nine percent profit or statutory profit or whatever not you personally but of course national grid and that there's not a whole lot of concern with how much it actually costs um, and because uh, the rate payers will pay it all and we're all the rate payers um, so I don't know those are just my thoughts sorry you you seem like a nice guy oh, but, but, um, but but national no no believe me I this is why like we're this is why we're doing these I mean proactively that the current schedule right now for construction isn't really until 2027. So we're still a number of years away. So when you mentioned things like the traffic management, you know, transport and staging, you know, that's good for me to bring back to the project team to, you know, kind of voice those, you know, concerns that you have. So that's why we're, you know, really trying to be proactive in having these sort of presentations um, and kind of going back. So, a little bit about kind of the permitting process. So one of the, we're going through the state siding with the energy facility siding board. Um, and so that review also, you know, kind of they ensure that, you know, the project provides a reliable energy supply with the, a minimum impact at the lowest possible cost. And they review, you know, needs, alternatives, environmental impacts. And within that whole process, there is the opportunity for a municipal and a butter participation. So that's, you know, kind of another avenue where you can express, um, you know, your thoughts during that permitting process. And I would, you know, encourage you to do that. I would encourage any of others, um, you know, so with that filing, I believe we're gonna be sometime in, at least anticipated in the spring of 2024. And that's about, that can take anywhere from, you know, could take up to two, two and a half years for the review. Um, you know, so there still is a lot of, you know, permitting efforts that needed, that we're gonna go through. Um, and I just wanted to kind of mention that. So we're, we will be going through the energy facility siting board. So that kind of does review some of uh, what you had mentioned. Yeah, but the, the thing about that is that the, the rules and those things have just continuously, gradually changed to uh, minimize the potential for uh, activist residents or citizens to interrupt these projects or keep them from happening. Um, I don't know. Uh, 
uh, the the, the um, yeah I I I'd be okay if it doesn't happen at all though I mean honestly I'm I'm really okay if Central Mass has more difficulty with much of any we, we don't like what the the uh, the small rural towns out here are so used to just being. Uh, you know, to the extent we have value to the rest of the state at all, it's at, it's for the fact that we you can use us to convey electricity or water power or hydro or you know the the or drinking water or uh, or just clean air. We have all, we're we're like eighty percent wood you know forest. We're, so we just we supply all the clean air for the rest of the state. Um, where our natural resources is really all that we have. And, um, and just land. Um, and uh, so, you know, your rebrand of Central to Western Mass Energy Improvement, we're, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it's a brand. Yeah, it's a brand. I don't know. I, kind of, I don't even know what the prior brand was, but um, anytime, you, you Western Mass, anytime you mention Central, you know, the Central Mass or the Boston area, it just makes people upset. <laughs> um, I'm surprised because, the word green is not in there somewhere. Yeah, right, right, right. But I mean, just like, yeah. So, so when you say that scheduling, uh, the service is scheduled for 2027, is that the entirety of the project or the area uh, affecting Conway? So that's kind of the current entire project. So the current, so I don't have, you know, I guess it's still, you know, early to tell when we'll be specific in Conway, um, but the current construction and restoration schedule is 2027 to 2033. So from, you know, the beginning of construction, and that doesn't necessarily include some of the, you know, efforts that have been kind of going on, such as, you know, field assessments, soil boring, access reviews, environmental, field work, so like that's all ongoing, but when I mention, I guess, you know, construction, that's the actual work when they're, you know, kind of, they're bringing the equipment in, they're staging, they're building the new structures, um, you know, pulling the wire, and then removing the current structures. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask, back to Phil's statement about the issue with large vehicles um, going on these small roads. Um, I would assume they're going to bring in the new towers, whether that be lattice or monopole, along with the transmission lines, put them up next to the existing, decom the existing and take those so we can expect two large or pretty um, intense times of large trucks going back and forth. I can, you know, the presentation, yes. if you haven't seen it yet, that'd be great to kind of go through it, but that's what I'm assuming how it's going to work is you put up the new ones next to the existing, take down the existing, truck those away. Yeah, yeah, and so, in, like I said, we're still, you know, a few years out, but our goal is to be very proactive when it comes to our outreach, so I, you know, kind of picking up on the concern of, you know, traffic management and, you know, the impact to the area timing. That's something that we can continue the dialogue and, you know, do our best to be very, um, you know, aggressive and very proactive when we're doing our outreach and mailings or, you know, monitoring the website or any abutters that want to meet in person, you know, we're always available to do that. So we'll be very proactive and, and taking that, you know, very seriously. So I can take some of these concerns back to the project team and, and mention them and, you know, kind of reiterate this is some of the feedback we're getting and work to, you know, try and minimize the negative impact, you know, as much as possible. And, and most of the, the line that you have going through Conway is parallel to the Deerfield River. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, we do have sort of a you know, a recreational inner tubing industry, if you want to call it that. Um, to, you know, uh, businesses pick up and drop off people on, in the top of Conway and float on the river in tubes to the bottom. And 
you know, the, the, the existing towers are visible at numerous sites through that. And, um, mm -hmm. and also along there, those are some of our most popular hiking and biking and dog walking trails because it's right along the river. Um, and, then, and, then, yeah. uh, and then you also have to, your, your, your electric line also, and this is one of the things that a lot of people are going to be concerned about, is exactly how you propose to bridge the South River, which is um, right, right where your electric line is, there used to be a railroad bridge that was torn down in 1920 something. And that was a hundred and the, the deck of the railroad to the bottom of the thing, I just saw there was 195 feet. Um, and so you're, so that's quite the gorge, like for, for us it is, it's quite the little canyon. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you would be doing, so. I, I don't know how you would, how the, the, the old, the existing one has sort of a tower at the rim of both, which is kind of unsightly because that's like a peak recreational area to swim in and to walk along. And so you see both of those no matter where you are. Um, it'd be great to, it'd be great it, to reduce the visual impact of the, the new construction to recreational users who are there for natural beauty. Um, and that's the issue with these new towers. You have 25 feet higher on a lattice tower. That means that the perimeter for that lattice tower, because of the guide wires, needs to be larger as well. So you're cutting away more trees. You're seeing more wire. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but when they up the kilowatts, they'll be able to sell more electricity. I guess so. Um, exactly. I, yeah, I mean, what I would take back is it would be it would be great if we could get a really comprehensive guide to the plan. Um, yeah. You know, we're years away, so you know, constant communication with you know the upcoming plan. Obviously, there's things we can't say, but there's definitely things we would like to have some say in. Um, and yep. like Phil said, that's to make sure the impact on our town and citizens is minimal as possible. Same with the environment. There's a lot of wetlands around these towers. Um, and of course, our roads, which are already under great pressure. <laughs> so. And then one of the things that you're also going to hear about, and I don't know if you're aware of this, that um, Eversource in a prior, when they just redid all of their transmission lines, I guess they finished that this year or last year? Last year. Last year. Um, you know, they, they followed all the, they, you know, they, they hired the environmental consultant to map out threatened and endangered flora and fauna, um, just like you are required to do. And they ignored the advice of their own consultant or the people doing the work um, just to, th th that were contracted out to do the work, um, ignored the endangered native bittersweet. Um, and a lot of people don't know, be, you know, I, I'm a gardener, I, I hate bittersweet, but that's the invasive Asian bittersweet that we have. American. Yes, we have a much, we have a much more pleasant Native American bittersweet that is highly threatened, and um, you know that the all, all all that ever happened was a modest slap in the wrist and a promise that ever source that whatever the sixteen acres of native bittersweet that was destroyed, which is like a significant percentage of all of the native bittersweet in the state, um, that that they'll buy or that they'll acquire some land and that they'll plant some. And they, they got away with making that promise. Um, but there's a whole bunch of people in town that are real sore about that still. Um, because, you know, the, w w when, you get, when you do all this, when you get these environmental studies, there's an assumption that the corporation will abide by them. <laughs> right? I mean, like... <laughs> right. And yep. when, 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 it, when you don't, um, and like... And you know, apparently the cost the, the cost of not abiding was not very significant, and that's why we publicized the fact that Eversource did not abide. And because um, I, I do that whenever I can, because that's the least we can do. Um, 
and uh, you know, but but that 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 affects everybody when you take away a natural resource like that. Not you, but not even National Grid, but EverSource, which is your uh, National Grid is ultimately is, that's the same ultimate Texas corporation as EverSource, yes. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Danny, right? Is that his name? No, oh. Danny's on our. I thought it was John. I'm sorry. What was your name? Are you asking me? Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Sorry. Oh. Uh, Joe Carroll. Joe. Joe. Okay, so Joe, we know you're uh, you, you're a part of a very much much larger team. Uh, we just ask if you could relay our concerns, and. Um, yes, definitely. Yeah, like we said, if we can get the. Uh, the presentation email to the town admin um, that'd be great yep. and um, just keep in contact with us uh, so you know once we receive that presentation we'll probably ask you to join again after we can look at it and ask some more questions and the other thing yep, you know and, and, I, and, I, and I the other thing uh, is you know and I tell this to Eversource too you know that there are Ever sort, you know, you, you do participate in um, uh, philo philanthropic activities, um, where, you, um, and that one of one of my recommendations would be if you're about to do a big project in a town, um, help help a town out, not not the, like with money, but just with the stuff that we need, you know, sports equipment for our ball field, the stuff like that, little things that would make such a big difference um, and, and, and would, would uh, you know, ease the path of getting a project done in town with a minimal of, you know, protest and push what, whatever. Yeah, and pushback. It just, it's about being a good neighbor and, you know, and all that. And so... Oh, definitely. You know, yeah, like, no, for sure. And it's something I do try to, you know, kind of look into, you know, in all of the communities where we are. Um, involved in the project so it's definitely something that we can continue discussing and i can definitely bring back and you know do my best to you know sort of get back in any way that i can um you know it's not as easy as me just kind of committing to something but yeah i'll certainly you know stay in touch around that and, and see what we can do because no it is true you know we do especially at least i try to be very you know i want to be involved in and kind of show, like you said, like the good faith and being a good neighbor. So it's it's important to us. It's important to me. Um, so it's definitely something that you know I'll continue, you know, discussing with you. Absolutely. And one of the things to me, like you'll see, you'll, if you, if you go out to that, to part of your proposed job site, you'll see where it transects or bisects um, existing hiking and walking trails. Um, all of them need a lot of work. Yeah, beautifying the area yeah. would be one thing. You're taking away trees or whatever. You put in other native plants to beautify the area. Right. right. That would be huge. Right. But, you know, also um, the town in general and every, you know, there's we have lots of, we, we're a town that depends on volunteers and um, we pass the hat and we have cupcake sales to fund our government. I mean, that's like basically it. <laughs> uh, so we're, we're. That's all I eat. That's my salary. That, exactly. Yeah. Adam, Adam salary is actually cupcakes. Um, <coughs> um, yeah. So, so we're, 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 you know, we could, we, we need help. Um, you know, um, and, our next meeting, I know the last email I saw that was sent to the, to, I'm Adam, the assistant to the select board and town administrator. Um, yep. and, yeah. Danny had said if we couldn't meet tonight, maybe on the second. And I don't know if this, presentation got misplaced, but there's really nothing on the second for our meeting. If someone could zoom in on that one or call in when they had something in front of them. Yeah, I can definitely, um, I can reach back out with the, to the project team and see if anyone's is available. I, unfortunately, I won't be available. I'll actually be on my honeymoon. Um, oh, nice. And <laughs> if I wasn't oh, on my honeymoon, it was just vacation, I would make time to call in, but I don't think I'm going to be able no, no. to. 
Um, so I'll see if I can get anyone from the project team to call in and, and be available. And then if that's not the case, um, I'll follow up and you know definitely try and attend you know a, a meeting after January 2nd. But I'll see if we can get someone to be available on January 2nd. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Of course. It's, this is a good way to reach people. People actually watch these meetings and um, read about them in the paper. Yep. And that, congratulations on your marriage. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Still, yeah. still two weeks away. So, oh, yeah, she doesn't run away before the fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still have time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thank but, you but again. Yeah, so, like I said, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, thank you again. Like I said, if you could just, uh, uh, you know, um, relay our concerns, and if you could have a representative on the meeting in the second, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, definitely. All right, All right I will be in touch, and then we'll follow up when, great. and if I get someone for the January 2nd, I'll let you know. If I don't, I'll let you know that as well, and we'll um, circle back. If, uh, if you, uh, since the town administrator is on vacation, if you hear anything in the next couple of weeks, if you send it to mine, the assistant? Yep. Okay, definitely. Yeah, I know um, I received some from Danny. Like, yeah, Danny Eaton. Yeah, so we can just email Danny. Yep. All right, I can, yeah, I can email in the morning and make sure. Okay, yeah, definitely. But we'll, yes, so, um, like I said, I'll get back to the project teams and hopefully we'll be able to get some for January 2nd and uh, we'll send you an email once we have you know, kind of an answer one way or the other. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. All righty. You take care. Thank you as well. All right. See you. Yeah, see, it's funny the way that that works. Your, your corporate overlords always have like such a nice human face that they present. Yeah. No, I by design. Yes, I would need the presentation because I really didn't understand the thing he was saying. Twenty five foot tall. I don't, but I don't even know how to write that up because yeah. <laughs> when he's talking about twelve, I mean, yeah. yeah, I really didn't. This, all you need to know is that what they're replacing coming, it with, they're coming back. <laughs> what they're replacing the existing hideously ugly towers with are will be uglier and more hideous, bigger, taller, well, that part I got, and but. involve <laughs> the yeah, killing stuff. and poisoning of more flora, yep. and um, and. Uh, and they're allowed to do it. And heavy machinery and, on roads. Yeah, heavy, heavy machinery on dirt roads, annoying the heck out of anybody unfortunate enough to live near them. And uh, yeah, and the state, the state law says the towns cannot regulate this stuff at all, as long as they use these that's, magic. They have these magic that's words. That's the bottom line. We really don't. Have as as long as they send, they all they have to do is send a letter to a town saying that this is for electricity generation. And then the town can't regulate it. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. I need magic words that won't let anybody do anything to me. <sighs> um, yeah, so the next item is discussion and vote on flag flying policy. Um, we should have a flag flying policy. This is a. I already signed it. I read right. through it the other yeah. week. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely needed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, the only thing that I thought about was that how a couple years back one of the agencies of FERCOG um, had a little, was flying flags about child adoption or whatever, I forget, but it, it's a state agency, so it would be cut. State state flags are still allowed, mm -hmm. so um, you know it's uh, you know I, I wondered whether it would be best just to allow people to if anybody has any comments or there it doesn't seem like anybody ever wants a flag flown. Oh, the only the only comments that we ever get that I've ever gotten about flags on public are, property on oh, right yeah. right <laughs> that, that the only comments that I've ever gotten about 
flags are the failure of the town to abide by the flag code, yeah. which um, I didn't, there's a flag code, and basically if you have the American flag up at night, you're supposed to have a spotlight. Um, but that's not an actual law. It's a collection of preferences. Yeah, it can't be frayed. Yes. It can't be faded. Right. There's all kinds of... Yeah, and when you look around, they're always... But, when you replace but, it, there has to be... But it's fine, for them, it's fine for them all to be made in China, of course. Like, yeah. yeah uh, like, but... Um, so I, I don't... Uh, but I, I've always been continuously surprised at some of the calls that we've gotten, though, saying that this, that, and the other is a violation of the flag code. And, um, and I think we did, we did say that we were never putting up another municipal flagpole <laughs> because, yeah. because it comes with it its own... The, the, you don't think about all this stuff when you're saying, oh, let's throw a flagpole in there. But the person that needs to raise and lower the flag the spotlight that needs to be there, the person that needs to turn that stuff off and on, the increased electricity usage, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just um, surprised anybody would even ask to put up their own flag on a town's flagpole. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you gotta, gotta own the lib somehow. Uh, so we have to vote on yeah, this? Yeah, or, or we could, but I'm okay voting on it because I think it's a good, it's just a basic, basic policy that um, square within the law is pr proposed by the town council um, based on what all the other towns are doing or ha have done. We're actually apparently, many towns have existing policies. We don't. That's a person. So I'll make a motion to approve the PEG flag policy to establish guidelines for the display of flags government recognized by the federal government, U.S. military, Palmia flags, and other flags on flag poles owned and maintained by the town of Conway. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Congratulations, everybody. We have a new flag policy. and dated today. Right. Um, vote to approve and sign the business licenses for today. Yes. Want to read them off to us? Yes, so I'll make a motion. Well, do I, do first I have to make a motion for each? Uh, no, just state what each one is and then we can do, you can make a motion for all of them. Okay. Um, motion will include the following uh, Conway business licenses. Okay. Uh, Barbara Lamas for doing business as the Conway Inn. Helen Baker doing business as Baker's Country Store. Russell French doing business as OSCO Incorporated. Mr. and Mrs. John Mags doing business as J and J Mags Antiques. Everett Vite doing business as Vite's Garage. He has a class two and class it's two different. Yeah, he has Same class thing. two and class three for Vite's Garage. And the alcoholic beverage license for um, Barbara Lamas again, doing business as Conway Inn. Right. So I'll move to approve those licenses for 2024. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Um, discussion of, I used to call it the autopsy of our town meeting, but I've been told that that phrase is unpleasant. So now we're just calling it discussion of special town meeting. 
They were deer trail, they were peeing it all up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this last one went about as well as it could have gone. Um, I liked your printout of um, the definitions of the motions and uh, what the uh, townspeople could call. I thought that was very helpful. It was also very helpful, I believe Adam, you were the one who stated, somebody stated, you could only respond to a particular article once. And that was also very helpful, so there wasn't that Jimmy. back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy, record. Thank you, Jimmy. Um, it was great that Phil was the only one to read the motions instead of doubling that up. Um, again, I, I thought it went really well. Yeah, um, I did too. I think, I think one of the lessons there is to um, especially when it comes to something like a borrowing article, to demonstrate your, not, I was going to say frugality, but it's really to demonstrate that you care what things cost um, and that you're trying, you're trying your best not to spend tax money unless it's necessary, wise, appropriate in every respect. Um, and you know, I, I think when you look at our neighboring town, right, uh, trying to borrow their $5 million for which was the second or third time. Yep, second, I believe. And, um, and you know, it, um, you know, having, I just spent Sunday with a whole bunch of Deerfield people that, that's all they were talking about, right? Like, that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like that, that, that um, what, when you notice the dip, one of the things, sorry, I'm trying to, yeah, the, the, the damage, the, the, the damage assessments from the July flood, so Deerfield's was $4.9 million, they seek to borrow $5 million, ours was $3.9 million, we sought to borrow $1.5 million, and, um, there's a there's a lot just to just to those basic numbers. There's a that that kind of goes a long way to explaining why ours passed and theirs didn't, um, in my opinion. But I thought I thought it did went did go well. I thought um, any any time you have a borrowing article, you're I still am in, impressed with just the number of questions, the thoughtfulness of the questions how each one of the questions required a complex and nuanced answer. Um, and uh, that like took like five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so, I, you know, <coughs> I, <coughs> I lost the wager that said the meeting would be over in 45 minutes. Um, it was twice that. But, um, but I was most impressed with the number of people that turned out for it. Yeah, it was great. On a that. December special town meeting with only eight, whatever new, that. And new, new faces. New faces mm -hmm. and people that turned out not because they had an ax to grind or a grudge or a complaint, but just because they believe in town meeting form of government and they want to participate. And, and they were good questions, and, 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 like you and they make their voice heard. Yeah. And so those, those are like, that. That to me is what I really took pleasure in. That um, you know, that it's kind of a vote of confidence to your to the select board, to the town government that um, we're doing it right. Um, and compare our attendance level with numbers with neighboring towns, and judge for yourself. And there's been nothing but positive coming in to the office. Some of the things we brought up. Yeah. So having the handouts out front, not on the seat, so that you can just pick up what you want, or just the way the questions are answered. Or the microphones running around, so it. Mm -hmm. it yeah, that was it great. Sped it up a little bit. And, and, you know, the other thing, too, is um, we're getting good at just not shying away from answering the questions that are asked. That one of the things that you realize when you're on the select in the select board at a town meeting is that because the person asking the question generally only has one opportunity to speak on an issue, they can ask the question 
and you can just sit there. If you, you know, especially if it's a question that you don't want to answer, or if you think it might make you look bad, or somebody else look bad, if you can just sit there and wait for the moderator to call the next person. And and that's the way it's done in a lot of towns. That's the way it was formerly done here a lot. Um, and I, I always try to, you know, there's a couple times when I said, Jimmy, just hold on a second. Let me, let's, let me just answer that question. And I think that that's really something to remember. Mm -hmm. Someone ask a question, no matter what, and no matter if it makes you look bad, no matter if you're not really sure about the answer, then you say that. But just always answer the question. Always just acknowledge that the person asked a question and that you care enough to do that, that you acknowledge it. And just do your best. And try not to hurt people's feelings. <laughs> so I always got to remind myself. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought I thought it went well, and that there was a lot of good stuff, a lot, a lot of stuff to be proud of. And so, <clears throat> um, items not anticipated, forty-eight hours. Anything, Adam? Nope. Town administrator update. Bernie did forward a few thoughts, but not not in real. Yeah. Yeah. Just your basic thoughts and prayers. See you later. <laughs> See you in January. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, select board member comments, concerns. Chris, got anything? Uh, nope. Part of the town admin update was that the public building should start breaking ground in the spring. Yeah. I know some people are asking, so. Yeah. Um, and it's, we're doing that the right way, too. We are. Um, so yeah, I mean, just my comments and concern were just the, the flood today, which really sucked. That's, that's about it. It was really bad. And um, mail, we have a veteran service officers association. Uh, So there is a Western Mass Veterans Service Office Association that promises assistance um, in uh, obtaining more federal benefits for the veterans in town. a government agency or whether that's a private thing or strolling pub. This is not a government agency. It is not? Veterans Affairs is not a government agency. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> they spend money like one. I mean, this is good to get out there, but there's plenty of organizations that offer right. the same thing. All right. <coughs> yeah. Um, announcements. Uh, yeah. Saturday, for the first time in two years, my dog broke free from the fence and traveled on his own to the Conway Inn for a treat. That's big news. That is big news. <laughs> That's big news. <laughs> I'm not writing that. <laughs> that's my life. That's the best thing that happened. That's the biggest thing of my life in a while. So, um, uh, yeah, so the upcoming uh, holidays. Um, and then our next meeting is January 2nd, 2023, at 6 p.m. in this location. And uh, with that, I'll move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.